Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com, and this is the week in charts. I'm just going to thank all you guys and girls for being here tonight. Looks like our numbers are starting to go back up, finally. I'm finally starting to remember to uh, to mention it here and there, so that's good. So thank you for uh, for showing up. Appreciate that. All right, what are we talk about? Well, obviously, current market conditions. I'll have plenty to say about that. Your questions on trading, your favorite stock and crypto picks. If you don't mind, hold off until we get the live charts for the stocks and crypto, and I'll let you know when that is. Put a dollar sign in front of anything crypto. I doubt that uh, anyone will have anything they want to look at, but I'm willing to take a look at uh, anything you might want. I'll take a look at the big ones for sure, Bit, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, stuff like that, on things of that nature. All right, so what are we going to focus on? Well, I want to talk a little bit about an intraday trader's dream, and that happened yesterday, and that's... It's kind of cool to keep your head while everyone else is losing theirs, not to be shot in Friday, but it does feel good as a trader to be able to deal with these situations when you end up with like a market route. I have some new, possibly half-baked, but new research on day trading the VIX. And when I discover something, I like to kind of put it out there right away, maybe a little too soon, but I have played around with the VIX for over 30 years, so it's not like it's a completely brand new concept, but it ought to make a lot of sense just a minute or two. Before we do all that, there's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading or, as often summing up, all predictions are about the future, and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. All right, the route day is an intraday trader's dream, and I, I preach a lot against day trading, and... I do too much of it. In more recent years, I've done quite a bit. I've kind of been goaded into it a little bit through some clients that seem to to do well with it. And one person in particular, he'll print money, blow up, print money, blow up, print money, blow up. <laughs> and every now and then he'll be in the print money phase and it kind of draws me in a little bit. And I have to be really, really careful. And one thing I've been working really hard on lately is is less is more. And I'll talk a lot about some of the things I'm doing in upcoming webinars on that. But one of the great things that occasionally happens is a route day. And that was like Wednesday when the market just starts at one end and just goes in one direction. It doesn't matter what direction, as long as it just keeps on keeping on. And it's kind of fascinating. One thing I like to look at is two bar highs on a 15 minute chart. And if we take a look at the P's, basis of spiders, and it did short futures yesterday. And we had the gap lower, obviously. And notice it went a long time before making a two bar high. And it wasn't that big of a two bar high. You had some narrow ranges, you had a little bit of a somewhat anemic two bar high. Although when you short to the gills, it looks a lot bigger than it, than it does on this end of day intraday chart, if that makes sense. At the end of the day, you look at that like, oh, it's no big deal. And again, it went back to barely making these two bar highs. And then finally, we had a little rally. Was that late today or when was that? Anyway, for the most part, it headed lower. Oh, here we go. That's not the end of the day over here. The end of the day is actually right here. I'm sorry. So this is the, this is the next day's action. This is a little bit of today's action. But you can see it, it closed, it started at one end and closed at the other. So that was pretty awesome. And of course, you had Landry Light the entire way down, which is pretty cool on a 15 minute chart. Now, the thing is, on the ACP platform, you're not going to have the overnight trading. So it's a 30 EMA on a 15 minute chart, but it's not counting the any of the overnight trading, which is fine. I think that gives you a pretty good reference. And you can see down below, I've got the Landry Light plotted. All right, let's talk about trading the VIX on a route day. So yesterday, as you know, was a route. We just started at one end again, ended at the other. The market was very persistent in its downtrend. In fact, let's just back it up a couple slides. If you were to take this line and draw it through the bars, I was pretty amazed at how persistent this downtrend was all day long. Uh, linear regression would be the same thing, obviously. I just like to draw a line through the bars. So that's really a trader's dream. Now, 
I have an IRA and I, and I take a lot of the service stocks there and I, I use puts instead of outright shorting when there's a, um, a short in the service. And kind of the great thing is, and, and again, not to be shot on Friday, but it's nice only having one long. My, my IRA actually just has one long in it and that's ARLP. I, I've got a little bit of GBTC HODL, but don't tell anybody that. That's kind of embarrassing for a, a <laughs> trend follower but i do um I, I am kind of bullish on crypto longer term but right now it's in a really ugly bear market and it has been for a long time as i've been preaching anyway i was thinking okay how can i not so much hedge because i just uh, just have that one stock in there although it would be nice to make money because it was going down yesterday but how can i make money over there there's there's no s p futures i can certainly trade some of these various shares out there inverse shares or whatever but what would happen if i went after the vix because the way the market was sort of coming unglued and in, in such an orderly fashion although if you're long the market obviously wasn't orderly for you it was orderly going against you kind of a chinese water torture that just got worse and worse so i decided to take a look at the vix and looked at the uvxy and you could see it didn't do a whole lot in morning trading. And it kind of based along, based along, tried to peep out of that base a little bit. And then it began to break out. So that's when I decided, okay, I'm going to go ahead and pick up a thousand shares just kind of for S and G's and see what happens. And I decided to use a half a point stop because I was thinking that if this thing takes off, it should take off and not look back. So stop was down here. And then the IPT was a half a point above the market. Now, I took partial profits. I actually took them slightly earlier than the than the IPT, and that was because it came like close a couple of times and backed off a little bit. And I figured it would be a bird in the hand to lock in some partial profits, even though I was a few dollars short of the initial profit target. I just happened to be looking at the screen at the time. I'm trying to become more and more hands off because I've got a shit ton of projects happening right now. I don't know how much of the mess you can see in the background, but uh, since the banner fell down, you can see all what's going on behind the curtain, so to speak. But I'm putting the studio back together. The uh, I'm, I'm worked a I've worked a deal, or um, I've been asked by a, a Chinese investment forum to do some uh, to do a webinar in particular for them. And you know maybe after COVID they'll they'll bring me over, but I'm um, getting the studio back together for that. And anyway, there's a lot going on, and so something's gonna have to give. And I realize that I'm I'm watching the screen way too much, and I need to just back off and let things unfold. In other words, in a case like this, just put the stop in, put the IPT in, and forget about it. But since old habits die hard, I find myself looking at it thinking, yeah, you know what? It's a bird in the hand, just in case this market turns on a dime, goes right back up. Anyway, so that trailing stop, this was an automated half a point trailing stop. And then I actually the rest of the shares market on close. So here's a snapshot of the trades. So entry was 15.56. And uh, I took profits at 15.98. I think I was looking for 16.06, which would be half a point up. So a few cents below my IPT. But I do remember at that moment, I was very happy to get that IPT out a little early. Now, if you look at the closing price based on where we started, and it might be a smidge higher than this, but 500 shares in that, so it's 831. So for the day, just a quick little pickup trade, 1044. Yeah, I know, I, I did have, if it, would, if it went completely horribly wrong, I would have lost $500. So you can argue that, okay, that was a, fairly risky trade but the market was kind of unfolding as a route day and then the 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 vix really wasn't taking off and then all of a sudden it began to take off with a lot of vigor anyway that gave me vix fever <laughs> and i started this morning woke up this morning uh, excited about the vix again uh the vix the vix is something that when it works, it's like butter, but sometimes it doesn't work. And I was thinking earlier this morning, it kind of reminds me of when I would consult with a hedge fund 
and they were trading bonds. And I would look at other things like the dollar and gold, et cetera, and do a little intermarket technical analysis on top of all the trend following moron stuff. And what I discovered was the stocks and bond, stocks and gold and the dollar, all that stuff only mattered when it mattered. Now, many years ago, and I'm trying to think of the name of the book. I gave all my books away and I started a new collection, but uh, there was a trader. One of you guys might have it that's here tonight because I gave them all to y'all. But there was a trader that would trade uh, S&P futures off of bonds and he would just ping those all day long because the intermarket connection really worked well. But I found in more recent years, of course, this was 20 years ago, but I found since 20 years ago, it doesn't work as well, but it only matters when it matters. And, and the bitch is one of those things that sort of only matters when it matters. There are times where the the inverse correlation to the market is fantastic. John's essential book. John, you were one of the guys that was that um, won the lottery on those. <laughs> yeah, after I did it, I felt bad. You know, people from Australia and other places all around the world, like I want some books. I'm like, oh, geez. <laughs> anyway, so this has got me dusting off the VIX. Uh, to those of you who've been around for a while following me you know that 30 something years ago or 30 years ago i did a lot of vix research and that was inspired by larry connors who was kind of vix crazy back in the day and i did dust off some of that recently i think it was cbr3 system and what was cool was for the last six months or so whenever i did the presentation it had absolutely printed money but if you go back to the pandemic it kind of it, it kind of came unglued a little bit and that's a problem with a short-term system is you could only make so much money over a short period of time, but you could lose a shit ton over that same period of time. <laughs> so that's why I'm not a huge fan of, of short-term swing type systems. But Dave, I thought you were a swing trader. Yeah, I am, but I will hold positions longer term after the initial profit target was hit. We have one in the portfolio now, as I've been preaching at nauseam. We've been in it for about a year and a half. And that'll be fodder for another conversation. So the research I woke up thinking about, <laughs> Dave, what you wake up thinking about has changed. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Intraday VIX reversion to the mean, RTM trading using UVXY and SVXY as vehicles. And one thing I was thinking about, and, and it kind of makes your head hurt, if you look at the, the VIX itself, it's a derivative. And then if you look at the these VIX shares, they're uh, a derivative of a derivative. And the VIX itself is a derivative of a derivative. VIX is calculated from options. And then the UVXY and SVXY are calculated uh, based on futures, which is the derivative. Anyway, it, it'll really make your head hurt if you try to figure it all out. I, I don't know that the UBXY and SBXY are necessarily the best vehicles for this. I know there's some issues with futures, but I think if you're just going in for a day trade, then I think you're okay doing something like this. Now, the premise is that the VIX reverts back to its mean after being stretched. And remember, the, the VIX is the volatility index. And volatility acts a little bit more differently than price. If you were to trade volatility with something like the VIX, realize that it's a cyclical type of thing versus a trending type of thing. And you wanna be focused mostly on reversion to the mean type moves, okay? Now, like oversold can become more oversold and overbought can become more over, overbought, remember that stretched can become even more stretched. As I joke with, about the markets, it's always darkest right before it gets more dark. So you can't just buy or sell a market because it's stretched or buy or sell volatility through the VIX because it's stretched. You have to make sure that re the reversion to the mean move has started. And you'll need some sort of trigger for that. So let me show you where I'm going with this. And, and again, this is an intraday trade, or if you prefer, call it a day trade. 
I try to call day trading intraday trading because I, ideally I want to get in and put my orders in, my predictive stop, my IPT, and then go about my life, work on my China presentation, study the VIX all day, or or something maybe a little bit more exciting other than stare at a stupid screen watching the, the flickering text all day. But anyway, my premise is, okay, the mean, let's the mean be the 10-day simple moving average. And this is what the CBR3 was based on. And once the VIX gets stretched away from its moving average, look to take an intraday trade, get in when you think that reversion to the mean move has started, and then exit by the close and maybe take some profits along the way and, and of course, have those stops trailed higher. So, RTM cha ching type of move is what we're looking for. And that's what happened yesterday with the UVXY. Now, a possible trigger could be high, greater than yesterday's high, and or an expansion of range. And I'll flesh these things out as we go through an example or two. So let's take a look at the chart I'll be using. Just for reference, I put the S&P 500 in the background, it's orange, but I guess for our testing purposes, because we're not using it to trade the S&P, we're using it to trade the VIX derivatives, okay? So that's the S&P 500. The VIX, we're using the actual VIX as our signal, and then we're gonna take SVXY as a short VIX, and UVXY as a long VIX. And again, if there's a better vehicle to use, in your opinion, let me know in the comments below if you're watching a recording of this or let me know live in, in the Q&A. Anyway, so this little purple line under here is just a 10-day moving average. That's gonna be our mean. We're looking, to, looking for the market to revert back to. Now, down here is a percent from the SMA. And when it's 10% or more, we'll call that stretched, although it can get really, really crazy and go much further than that. Maybe 10% might be a little bit on the on the skinny side in, in today's day and age. Now, the other thing is, just FYI, you might be able to read some of this, some or most of this formula over here. I can post these formulas in the Facebook group if you guys are interested in carrying on some of that research yourself. Now. Down here, and this is something I've been noodling with for a long time, or at least a year or so, maybe not forever. But if you're trying to trade something intraday, let's say you're trying to trade an ETF intraday, and you know, I think this would work in, in stocks too. If it's only, let's say, 10%, provided there's no gaps, okay? Let's say it's only 10% of its normal true range. And so you, you come in today and the, the market, whatever you're looking at, lab D, lab U, whatever, it's only 10% of its average true range. Well, maybe it's just choppy. And if you're looking at that 15 minute bar, that bar is gonna be like that big. And it's gonna, oh my God, it's going straight up. I better jump in. But if you look at how much range it has moved, maybe it's only moving 10 or 15% and it's not worthwhile going in. And, and I, I talked a lot about that if you go look at the quick clips on YouTube, youtube.com slash C slash Dave Landry, and look at the things that I did with the with the whole holy grail day hunting. And that involves this same little indicator down here. Now, just real quick, I don't want to bore you with the formula. I'll bore you. <laughs> I guess too late, huh? Uh, but I'm using yesterday's ATR because I don't want today's range to factor into that. I just want to look at today's range based on yesterday's ATR. So let's say this thing moves 100%. Well, that means that today's range is the same range, or at least the intraday range, is the same range as the average true range has been over the last 10 days based on yesterday's calculation. So hopefully that'll make some sense. But this will tell you, basically, this is your wide range bar calculation. Now, my theory with the day trading is, in order to make money, you've got to capture an expansion of range intraday, okay, like we had yesterday. And 
I don't know what that percentage was, but it, but it was pretty big compared to what it was based on the HER. So when that range, if that range is, let's say, below 50%, then you might just have a narrow range bar in the works, and you might be able to sit on your hands and avoid a lot of chop, okay? So if I see a market less than 50%, I'll put in maybe some alerts at the top of the market, alerts at the bottom of the market, and then go about my life. And believe me, I'm working harder and harder to go about my life lately, especially. So that's what that is. That's a percent of today's range. So if we take a look at what happened yesterday, if you measure the close below the moving average, if you measure that distance and you look at that percentage, the VIX closed 13% below its moving average. Now remember, if you go dust off Dave Landry on swing trading, the VIX systems were based on 10%, if memory serves, below the 10% moving average, below the moving average. And I did talk again, I did talk about those system so you can go in and, and search my YouTube channel. So the indicator below is at 13, minus 13% and change, a little bit closer to 14% actually. And then yesterday you could see we had a nice expansion of range and it went back to the moving average, okay? Now again, we're exiting by the close, we're not gonna hold overnight because when you start looking at some of these VIX charts, you're going to see that thing can just get whacked overnight, 10, 20 points, or it could take off 10 or 20 points, especially if you're trading these SVXY and UVXY, which are, which I think are leverage. Does anybody know how much they leverage? Let me know in chat. I think it's two-time leverage on those. Now, like any intraday trading, as I was kind of alluding to a second ago, a narrow-range choppy bar will chew you up. And by the way, usually after a nice wide range bar like we had yesterday, the market will just kind of chop around like it did today and trading is an exercise in futility and you'll actually usually lose money. Now I did have two really good back to back days a while back, but that hasn't happened in a while. So again, you wanna use the percent of range to determine if a wide range bar is building I would say 50% or maybe even 100% or more for the VIX as a minimum on a non-opening gap reversal type of situation. And I'll flesh that out in a little bit. And I think that's a good starting filter. And use caution on inside days unless the prior day is super wide. So again, maybe pay attention to your percent range based on where you are on that when you're looking at that, that intraday, when you're looking at that inside day building. So Inside day is the bar is within the prior days bar, okay, obviously. And you want to, by taking, you want to wait for to maybe take out a low or take out a high before looking to get in, whatever the case may be. But you also want to look at the range. So again, maybe if it's it's fairly wide range, even if it's still an inside bar, you might be able to to take a trade in a case like that. But as a general thought, my trigger is gonna be, it takes out the prior day's low if it's coming back down to the moving average or takes out the prior day's high if it's going back up to the moving average like I just showed in that example from yesterday's trade. Yesterday's we come in last week at Bandcamp, huh? <laughs> now, less is more and believe me, I, uh, I go through these vicious cycles where I overtrade and I realize it's killing me and I go home grouchy and it makes my mom, my, makes my wife grouchy and then that makes me grouchy er, and then she gets grouchier and it's just not a good situation. As I often say, your life's gonna spill over to your trading and trading will spill over to your life. But less really is more when it comes to trading. One thing that I started doing, and I talked about this a while back, but I'm kind of doing a little experiment where I'm going to give myself so many tickets for intraday trading. And it's kind of a silly little game. And I also have, I'm going to do that on position trading too. But there's so many, there's a lot of projects going on right now. But right now on a personal level, just to see what would happen. And I did find, today was the first day I actually started with that. I've been trying to scale back for a while, but today's the first day I actually started. And I didn't find that there were a 
couple of trades towards the end of the day that I pretty much would have taken almost mechanically for like a scalp into the close. And I knew tomorrow being weekly options expiration that I'd probably would want to save some of those tickets up. Now I know it's kind of a, a silly game, but sometimes in trading, you have to kind of play a little game like that. And that little game kept me kept me out of trouble today. So we'll see how it shakes out. But I do believe that less is more. So I'm just kind of spitballing here, but maybe less than 100% range on the VIX because the VIX could really explode and go crazy. Unless, of course, maybe you have a situation like yesterday where you got a route in the market, you got persistency, it can't make a new high, two bar high to save its life. Maybe then you can jump in, especially if it's stretched away from the moving average. But again, like I said earlier, you know, it's half baked. I'm, st I'm still working on this. I worked all day on this, and it, it's it's going to take a lot more work to flesh it out. And you know, if anybody wants to take again, take the ball and run with it. I'll give you all my formulas and help you even get them set up if you want. But less than 100% range on the VIX, that might actually be a good number to look at. Right now, I'm probably not going to touch the VIX unless it moves at least 50%. But I'm beginning to wonder if 100% might be a better number. And that's one thing I did find in my testing is two things. Number one, when you're waiting for that reversion to the mean move, especially on the downside, when it stretched to the downside, sometimes you just have day after day a narrow range bar where it just grinds lower and lower and lower and lower. And those bars are 50% or less. And going in on, on trying to trying to catch some sort of little intraday reversal on that would be an exercise in futility, futility and that would really chop you up quite a bit. You You're much better off waiting for a a trigger for maybe a high to take out the prior day's high provided that the range has begun to expand at least past 50 percent and i'd venture to say maybe even a hundred percent and remember the vix only matters when it matters so anything above let's say 100 percent and you've got to set up take it anything below don't take it. You can see there's a whole lot of trading down here you would have avoided. I'm not looking for something to trade this every day. I'm looking for something where I could do the Jimmy Rogers thing. And Jimmy Rogers thing is, as he said, he just waits until his money lie in the corner and all he does is walk over there and pick it up. And again, and, and you know, I, I just I'm just excited because yesterday went well. Believe me, it hadn't been going that great lately, hence the bad moods. But Yesterday, I've got a sign over my office, it's a trade like a champion today. And it's, it's a, I stole it from um, Notre Dame sign, you know, it's the same font and everything. And I try to make sure I trade like a champion every day. And yesterday I traded like a champion. I didn't get too aggressive. I just, I just was thankful for the market for what it gave me. But it got me thinking again, you know, if I can only trade on those route days and, and know when they're unfolding, and stop watching every little bar because this little 15 minute bar, you think, oh my God, here we go again. This market's gonna absolutely implode. And then what does it do? It turns around and goes straight back up. So by watching the range and maybe looking for a little bit more rarer pattern, then I could step in when the time is right. A well-chosen opening gap reversal in stocks, which we haven't had a lot of lately because we don't have a lot of stocks and uptrends. But if you get a a stock, especially if it's kind of a thick stock, well-known, lots of institutional support, and you've got a nice little pullback or TKO, or whatever, you got that nice little opening gap reversal, that could work out really nicely. And maybe, as you'll see in a second, some opening gap reversals with the VIX might work out nicely, provided, of course, they're stretched. Now, the beauty of empirical research or looking at charts by hand testing is you pick up a lot of of things. And one thing I found today, and this really kind of threw a wrench into my research. I really thought I'd have this research banged out earlier this morning, or certainly by noon, 
and this kind of maybe stumble through it. And every time I'd start working on something else, I'd go back in and try to figure out what the hell's going on. And I never did figure it out. But here's like a perfect setup over here. You could see that the VIX was stretched like 50% or more away from its moving average. And then it began to implode. That's That would be kind of a textbook example of what I'm trying to accomplish. And what I can't understand is the short VIX should go up and then the up VIX should go down, but the up VIX actually went up. So I haven't figured out what the hell happened in this situation, as you can see, but obviously the short VIX would have done just the opposite and you wouldn't have bought it because it's going down. So if anybody can help me figure this out, that'd be great. Now keep in mind, these are based on futures, okay? This is based on the options market, and maybe there's a complexity in the futures. And it seems like at this point in time, this market was acting like it was one day off from this market. And it's like I've spent so much time looking at it, trying to figure it out. I still haven't figured it out. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make, though, is, is how is this anomaly a positive? Well, we got to figure out why it did that. And if we weren't hand testing, Maybe we would just look at the mechanical test and, and this will get swept under the rug, but we don't want this situation to happen to us in the future, okay? The question is, do TKOs work on the downside? Uh, I, I, yeah, I think uh, pa most patterns work on the upside and the downside. I just don't see a lot of TKOs on the downside for some reason. Usually you'll have some sort of, um, sharp retrace but it, it, it won't be like just a one bar up now over the gap reversals work on the downside too shorting obviously is a little bit more trickier than the upside but yeah most patterns work on the upside and downside the the witch hat i'm not a big fan on the upside i like it better for the downside the gatekeeper if you go back to long long time ago that's not a that's not as much of a a buy side pattern as it is a shorting pattern Maybe I guess you can look at IPOs and they kind of look like gatekeepers when they, when they make a first deep trace. But anyway, this kind of baffled me today. This is what really slowed me down in the research, trying to figure out why it did something that it should not have done. Now, it's not a holy grail. There's going to be a lot of fake outs and shake outs along the way. And major ogres often occur when the prior day isn't stretched, but the open in and of itself creates a stretch situation. What the hell does that mean? I have an example of that in one second. Now there are some gap and go or lap and goes after wide range bars. These could, these could also lead to impressive moves. So one thing that I mentioned in that aforementioned slide, and again, the, I just tried to get all this stuff together as quickly as possible. But one thing that kind of impressed me is you have these supernova days. I was trying to think of something exciting and kind of explosive that's happening. The first thing that came to my mind was a supernova where the VIX moves 300% or more based on its 10-day average true range. And those could be some unbelievable opportunities. And this kind of circles back to, I don't want to be in there like the, the rat hitting the button for cocaine, you know, over and over and over and over and over again. But I will be happy on one of these days where this thing shoots up three, four, five, six hundred percent or more to go in there and capitalize on that, pick some money up, and then just sit on my hands again for a while. So I think that's fodder for research. So here's a case where you were at the mean, okay, or at the moving average, mean equals average, right? So you were at the mean, so coming into this day, looks like it was January 27th, 2021, you're thinking, well, there's nothing really going on, and then all of a sudden, you got this explosive move in the VIX higher. Now, you can see the background, looks like the P's imploded on that day. I don't know if that was that's a little early. No, that's that's a little early for the beginning of the pandemic, I believe. But anyway, but the P's sold off hard, and you had a 600% move based on the range, or a 600% range increase. 
the range was six times its normal average. So what I'm wondering there is, could there be some kind of route situation you could have taken advantage of to capitalize on that? And you notice by the end of the day, it got pretty stretched, right? It went from zero because it was at the moving average or maybe a little bit above zero, or no, it was right at zero, to 50% above the moving average in one day. And that's just, that's pretty amazing. So I'd be willing to bet that if you were paying attention on a route day like that, you could probably get in and do okay. So it became stretched really, really fast, but before it became stretched, which is kind of like a, what's a good word for this? Uh, some some sort of research that got thrown off. And again, this is why I like to hand test things. And also, by the way, when you hand test, you can really play devil's advocate. Like I said earlier, it's like, holy crap, this thing just didn't do the complete opposite of what it should have. So why is that? Or is there even a reason? So what's kind of cool here is if you look at the UVXY on that day, you did have a gap higher. So I mentioned earlier, a gap and go, that would be one of the patterns to look for. And again, this whole thing was just like, okay, let's let this thing get stretched to the downside, wait for a bit of a reversion to the mean to the upside, and let's play it like this day here might have been a signal, okay? But then, of course, on this huge expansion in the VIX, this thing went up how many points? Like 28 points from the open. And I would like to think that you could have caught a piece of that. Maybe once it was up 100% and it looks like a route day and it's going up and up and up and up and up and up and up. You take a little tiny position, not a huge position, right? Because something like this would be crazy, crazy, crazy volatile. Maybe 100 shares, maybe even 50 shares from something like that depending on your account size, obviously, and just hold on for dear life. Oh, this is what I wanted to show. Okay, like sometimes it's not stretched, but then you have an ogre that it opens way, way, way up here, and then it implodes, okay? Now, fortunately in this situation, I was able to grab an intraday chart. The intraday data only goes back so far. Years ago, I used to spend thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars that I did not have. <laughs> You're welcome. To test a lot of things on an intraday basis. And nowadays, your uh, data is so much cheaper, but you can you can get enough data to go back and test some of your theories. And I think, I don't know how many months stock charts goes back, but it's quite a bit. And certainly enough to, to help you out. So a couple things happen here. You've got the yogurt, right? So these funny looking charts, I don't know what these are, but they're funny looking little charts, but it's uh, yellow. So that mean it went, means it went down. So it opens up here and closes way down here. And notice what happened on an intraday basis. It did make an ogre, but it didn't really take off right away. Instead, it based and then it took off. In fact, it reminds me a lot of yesterday's chart in the VIX, if you go back and look at that UVXY trade. But you can see this is the SVXY. So maybe, just maybe, based on that range, which is pretty big, in that breakout, you could have caught a nice little trend higher. And what's that, 20-something? It's hard for me to see, but I think that's 20 points or so run that's pretty it's it's substantial whatever it is it might be a little bit less than that but still it'd be a good trade nonetheless and then notice how it's pretty much a route all day long an ipt and a trailing stop you could have rolled that all day long right so this wasn't exactly what i set out to prove but maybe a lot of this ancillary research is going to help me out and give me a couple of patterns that i can trade I don't want to say sparingly, but trade when they occur, which might be sparingly. Now, it's not Holy Grail like everything else. There's going to be plenty of fake outs and shake outs along the way. And, and one thing you really have to do, especially if you're doing that empirical testing, 
or especially if you're just doing pure mechanical testing, I should say. But when you're doing the empirical testing, it's kind of like you have to work to kill your darlings or kill your babies or whatever the, the saying is. I think kill your darlings. It's like you come up with this premise and you're feeling pretty good about it. Then you have to go out and disprove it. Okay. If the fix is high like now, would that be favor day trading and not swing trading because of the volatility? First of all, George, you shouldn't be day trading. <laughs> and uh, VIX isn't necessarily high. It's you have to look at where the VIX is relative to the uh, to the moving average. It's a relative thing, okay? I have a joke, but I can't say it. <laughs> I'll get demonetized. So remind me to to uh, to put that in, but. No, as far as swing trading, I would not swing trade on a pure swing trade basis for the for the reasons I mentioned earlier with like the the VIX systems in and of themselves with the short term systems. I was kind of gung ho for short term systems based on a lot of influence from Larry Connors back in the day. But I think what I failed to realize is bad stuff could happen even if you're in the market for a short period of time. But with an intraday trade in the VIX, I think you can, you can control your risk. It's probably always going to be a lot bigger than you think. So make sure you do trade at a small size, especially getting used to something like this. And also, I think it was, I wish I knew exactly how he worded it, but Michael Saylor was talking about Bitcoin. Imagine that. And he said, he pointed out like how many people will spend 100 hours researching an investment, okay? So spend 100 hours playing with the VIX before you put your hard-earned money down. This is a little bit more advanced stuff than I normally do. This is a, this is a, isn't quite the trend following more on stuff until, of course, you get into it the trade, then you do that. But anyway, it's definitely not a holy grail. I haven't found anything here that looks like a holy grail. There's going to be plenty of fake-outs and shake-outs along the way. What I discovered from just one day's research on this is – if you are waiting for that expansion of range, if you are waiting for that trigger, and then I would I would venture further to back up a little bit to see the forest for the trees. If you if you find yourself getting closer and closer to that screen intraday, and look for that little base to happen and then the breakout or the route day and then look to get on somewhere, I think you would do okay and maybe avoid some of those fake outs and shakeouts. But yeah, it's not for the faint of heart. This is just something that I think could has potential, but be super duper careful with it. Now, some gap and go type moves can really lead to some impressive moves. As of, it's, this is just the opposite of the ogre. The market gaps higher and keeps on going. In fact, if you think about it, I'm just thinking about this out loud. Go back a slide or two. And that ogre in the VIX was actually a gap and go in those inverse shares. So here's a case where you have a super wide range bar. I don't think it was much of a gap, but a yeah, super wide range bar higher. So the question is, would it be possible to capture a piece of an extreme wide range bar if it were in a route and it had already moved 100% of its normal 10 day range, would a trade be worth it? So that's what we're looking at here. And this was a 600% run. And you can see it went straight up. It was right around the mean and then it took off. Kind of just the opposite of the big gap, opening gap reversal that I think I showed earlier. This one just went up and up and up and up and up. And if you look at the market in the background, you can see the market went down and down and down and down. So you can see here, this would be a gap and go, obviously over here. You don't have much of a gap in this chart, but in the UVXY, this is a gap and go type of situation. And that's just a huge move. I feel like Tiny O is, look at that move, it's huge. All right, any questions on that? I know it's it's kind of half-baked and, and I'm always like, ah, I should probably wait until I flesh it out a little further, but I know a lot of you guys like to take the ball and run with it. So I thought I would just throw it out there. And believe me, I'm going to noodle with this a lot. All right, let's just hop into crypto real quick. I can't imagine there's going to be anything to look at there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is we'll hop into stocks. So I won't spend, I'll just spend a minute or two in crypto and then I'll pop over to stocks. 
And if there's any crypto pairs you want to look at or any stocks you want to look at or anything, just go ahead and ask now. All right. Let's see. Is this it? Nope. Okay. There we go. Okay, so this is... Crypto, obviously, what do we got going on here? How do I get rid of this? I'll just smush it down. You can tell this following up with some of that research earlier. Let's see if we get rid of that. All right, fantastic. Okay, here's Bitcoin. We have the, the 30 EMA, as I've been saying, is your best friend in crypto. As long as it's below 30 EMA, don't bother buying it or any other pair. And trust me, as I'll show you in two minutes, and I haven't even looked at the charts myself, it's going to keep you out of a lot of troubles. Take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum not looking so hot either, as you can see. Uh, all these pairs have been in a bear, a bear market for a long time, or most of them. There's Sheeb, you know, they keep trying to raise that from the dead. I, I, I get the, I guess because of the things I click on in my, I have a Yahoo feed. I'm always getting crypto stuff in there. Elon coin, <laughs> you can see downtrend too. So as I often say, your best friend in crypto and maybe any other market is the 30 EMA. So let's just see what's the strong, what the strong pairs are real quick. And a lot of these strong ones aren't even above the 30 EMA. And as you look at these again, 30 EMA would keep you out of a lot, a lot of trouble. And I really had been spending much time in crypto lately because of this. I suppose you could short them, but that has some difficulties too. I did short a lot a while back, and then I got so busy with stocks that I forgot to short crypto. So there's only one of me, and there's only so much can go around. <laughs> and, you know, I was thinking, I was talking to my wife earlier, she's in a lot of stress too. It's kind of like, one thing you got to be careful with when, when you're under a lot of stress is that your body will start shutting down things and only pay attention to certain things, the most important things. And that's what happens. Like in a fighter pilot, he's only focused on one, one thing. He can't think about all these other things that are happening. All right, no crypto pairs? You guys want to talk about anything? Okay, fine. That's cool because there's really not much to talk about. And I'll do some walkthroughs in crypto soon. Just, Let's make sure there's nothing happening. All right, so let's take a look at the, let's first take a look at the P's and then let's take a look at some other markets. Let's see if we can get what I want here. Let's go this. Okay, S&P 500. If I can find it, there we go. All right, S&P 500. It's funny, today almost felt like a flat day, right? But it was actually down a half percent. What's concerning, as I was telling my service peeps, is we closed at a new closing low. You'd have to go all the way back to March of 2021. So that's that's not a good thing. We're at one year plus lows. Let's say you bought an index fund last March and you're all excited, can't wait to see how you're doing, and you log in or you open your statement and realize that you're, you've actually lost money over the last year or so. And that's not a good thing. And if you think about it, some people buy stocks when they have money, some people sell stocks when they need money, and others use far more sophisticated methods. Mary McClellan, late mother of Tom McClellan, said that once, which... I probably say about every presentation. But if you think about this, as this market drops more and more and more, so we're down about 20% now. But if it continues to drop, it's going to put more and more pressure on people. And I would never try to factor in news or anything, but obviously it sounds pretty bleak out there. And that might put pressure on people to raise a little bit of. Uh, cash. I know I'm not in a big hurry to, to take on any big new projects at the moment. 
until we see how things shake out. NASDAQ composite down a little bit in here today, not the end of the world, but it did close, I think, just shy, like one more tick lower, it would be back to one year plus closing lows. So you can go back to fall of 2020, okay? So that's 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 getting a little long in the tooth. If you bought stocks in fall of 2020, because you're buying whole broker said, oh, we're in for the long haul. <laughs> Sounds like a cross between Marge Simpson and I don't know who. <laughs> anyway, you're a hurting pup now. So obviously downtrend remains intact. We're oversold here fairly longer term, but that doesn't mean the market can't keep going lower. Always darkest right before it gets more dark. Not always, but sometimes. <laughs> Rusty ended up a smidge. You can see it's in a longer term downtrend. My big concern has been here and everywhere else is that we take out these recent lows. There's no support for long ways. Same thing for the indices, other indices, I should say. Gold, the commodity, got a little pop today. And before I forget about it, bonds actually did a smidge higher. A little nice little opening gap reversal. <laughs> I was cursing earlier when I saw this opening gap reversal in bonds. I was pissed because I I thought it was in the market. And I'm like, why well, didn't I short that? But uh, I guess I could have shorted it, uh, but I wasn't really paying attention to bonds. I usually don't, at least on an intraday basis. Energies. I uh, had an okay day, a little bit of an ogre there, but they have lost some steam as of late. And I'm seeing a short or two showing up here. I'm not in a big hurry to rush out and short them. One, because overall the sector still looks pretty good. I know sometimes those pioneer setups can really pay off. But other reasons is that the setups in and of themselves aren't fantastic. And energy, energies and commodity-related stocks can be a little choppy. So I'm not in a big hurry to short them just yet. Not that I won't short an energy stock, but I'm just not in a big hurry. Metals and mining, a lot of support below, but you can see pretty serious thrust followed by a pullback. So that's not looking so hot. In here, consuming our durables, this has me concerned. As you can see, a pretty serious slide in place and imploded yesterday. And this is a defensive type of area because in a bear market, you still need to do things daily, right? That and you need toilet paper for those things, right? And you also, which you'll need, <laughs> which creates a use for toilet paper. Look at the foods, the foods are imploding. So people still eat in a bear market. And people still use toilet paper, but why are the foods imploding and why is the consumer non-durables imploding? So that's just not a good thing. Anything financial related, pretty serious downtrend, as you can see. And biotech not doing so hot in here, a little bit of a bounce today, but it looks poised to continue its downtrend. So not looking so hot. Oh, take a look at retail. Look at that. Look at that. It's huge. Uh, it really accelerated lower yesterday. And then it stabilized a little bit today, but boy, I wouldn't try to catch that falling knife at all. Pretty impressive though. Look at look at that uh, sell-off. So you can go all the way back to at least, you go 2021, then you could probably go back even further, probably go back another couple of years. On a net net basis, that's no price appreciation. Transports are pretty high levels longer term, but they are, breaking down from those levels so that's certainly not a good thing they got whacked pretty hard today for the transports down a percent and a half plus software not doing too good as you can see longer term downtrend intact none of those areas didn't have a whole lot of support for quite a ways and so far it hasn't found any and let's just wrap it up with the semis if you guys want to take a look at any individual stocks let me know now i know we talk about them all day in facebook but if there's anything that we didn't talk about or you just thought of feel free to punch it in now semiconductors in in flatsville so far obviously longer term downtrend like pretty much everything else remains intact george wants to take a look at src as a first thrust uh well if you're just looking at this i'd say yes and it triggered a couple days ago that's a reit the reits aren't doing so hot where are the reits I thought I pulled them up earlier. They're somewhere. There they are. Yeah, there's a REITs. So it looks okay. Uh, REITs could kind of be choppy. But yeah, it, it looks okay. I prefer if it was coming off of an all-time high, like the slide we had back here, okay? 
but it's okay. I wouldn't rush out. And then the other thing, the volume, eh. on the short side, you really want stocks to be a little bit thicker than that. I would pass on that one, George. But good eye if you're just looking at like if this was an all-time high here and this slid and pulled back, that would be that would be great setup. I'd say good eye. But the fact that it's not all-time highs and it's kind of wide and loose and all, I think I'd pass on that one. All right, anything else? You're welcome. Going once, going twice. Well, as usual, I want to thank everybody for attending tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule. Anything unanswered, if you're not in Facebook, DaveLander.com slash contact. If you are, just, of course, bring it up there. And then you could often, well, not often, but <laughs> you could PM me if you do put something up there and I don't see it and you're waiting on the answer. Just let me know. Uh, everyone else, DaveLander.com slash contact. Everybody have a great weekend if we don't talk to you now and then. And may the trend be with you. Thank you so much.